day. This is another accordion lesson from Accordion Shop Cape Town. My name is Stanislav Angelo, your accordion teacher, accordion advisor. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for those of you who have been following the, the set of 10 beginner accordion lessons on the 8th have been posted so far. There is two more coming. Uh, I just didn't manage to keep with the once a week lessons but they will come soon. Today's lesson is I'm recording for one of my students who is uh, learning the pieces from the accordion syllabus of the University of West London and specifically we are looking at grade 2 uh, and the song that we he is learning, he chose to learn, he had very good results last year, he had 94% uh, on this grade 1 and he's very excited to carry on. So we're learning a song called Burattino Triste, which is, comes from an Italian book where it's published by Bergen Publishing Company. Uh, and it's called Burattino Triste, and the book is called Primi Passi by an accordionist called Roberto Qualia. I'm not sure of the pronunciation, the surname is spelled Q-U-A-G-L-I-A. -A. As far as I know, in cases like this, the G is not pronounced. So what I'm going to do, I will first play the song with two hands together, not in a very fast tempo. In fact, I'm going to give you an example of the tempo that is recommended by the composer. We've got 76 beat beats per minute for a crotchet which is something like this, one, two, one, two. So it should sound like this. So I'm going to play it much slower than this. First with two hands together, just to give you an idea of the song. And then I'll start breaking it into small pieces, playing it in separately hands, etc. So the tempo will be one and two and. slower tempo than uh, what is recommended by the composer. Uh, I also want to explain for those of you who got the book and are learning the song, uh, there is a, it's a one page song and there is a da capo al fine which means I went to the end of the page and I started back to the beginning until I reached the point where it says fine which in Italian means ending. So now I'm going to play the first section until the fine, only with the right hand. You will notice that there are a lot of things that actually come a few times. So you will also try to use the same kind of finger. So I want to say, before you start, it's very important always to observe the key signature, to pay attention that they are also accidentals, etc. So, as we can see in this song, we've got B flat and E flat in the key signature, and we are in 2 4 time. So, before I start, my first finger is on G, second on A, and third on the B flat. And this is how it goes 1 and 2 and. Next part 
is very similar, in exactly the same as the beginning, with the, the ending is different though. Just the last two bars that come now are slightly different. And then I'm going to continue with the following part, which is the last two lines on this page. And if you notice also there are a few places where there was a crescendo, etc. So I'm going to start, this starts mezzo piano, so we go a little bit softer. Mezzo forte. And then we go to the capo, which is I showed you earlier. In the left hand, we have got G minor, and then we've got a D7, which is above the G minor, and sometimes we have a C minor, which is under the G minor, and a few times, only one, oh no, a few times we've got the A7, which is above the D. So these are the notes that we're going to use in the left hand. So I'm going to start with, from the beginning with the G minor, one, and, and the left hand notes are played staccato, uh, in order to allow the, the right hand melody to come through. Left hand is just supporting the right hand. Okay, one, and two, and. Close the bellows. Now down to C minor, up to G minor, and now we skip the D and go to the A7 and D major. Down to G minor, D7, close the bellows, G minor, and now again C minor, G minor. Closing the bellows. One and two. C minor. G minor. D7. Down to G. A7. And that's what happens with the left hand. If you notice, the bellows changes were happening every second bar. We were observing the dynamics. There were some places where the dynamics was mezzo forte, which is medium loud. And whenever there was a crescendo, I will start a little bit softer and gradually build up to the louder. And then towards the end, we had a mezzo piano, four bars mezzo piano, which was the kind of the softer part of the song. And as I said, the bellows is changed every two bars. So one needs to first practice each hand on its own for a while. Once you feel comfortable with each hand on its own, then you may try to start trying together. When you start learning this song together, always take small parts, two bars or four bars, repeat them over and over again. If you find them difficult, try again separately, try slower etc. So I'm going to give you an example. So let's say you start from the beginning. You can repeat these two bars several times until you start feeling comfortable. And remember, Four bars later, we've got exactly the same four bars coming again. So, uh, even though it's one page song, it actually is really three or four lines only that one has to learn. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't be in a hurry to try together. And looking forward to hear how you can play it.